Hi, it's Dorothy Black from the .net. You know, I remember the first time that I had my HIV test. At the time, I didn't consider myself at risk, and honestly, I didn't really think anything of it. I, you know, it just kind of seemed like the right thing to do, so I was at the doctor, and so I asked for an HIV test. Uh, and this is like a few years ago before uh, you had to wait a few days to get your results back. And um, I remember kind of walking out of the consulting room being like, ah, la, 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 you know, whatever, you know, no big deal. And um, then I had to wait those three or four days. And I started freaking out quite badly towards the end. And when I got the negative results back, I kind of just like burst out crying and promised that I would never have unprotected sex ever again in my life. Of course, I did have unprotected sex again, and I put my sexual health at risk uh, quite often. Uh, for example, like the unprotected sex uh, that I was having in a relationship that I thought was monogamous, but where he was actually practicing, you know, quite crazy sex affairs, or that uh, one night stand with a complete stranger where I was filled with that drunken sense of immortality uh, where we weren't pretend we were prepared and it didn't matter because hey everything's you know okay and we didn't feel like going out to buy condoms so did it stop us having sex no we just had sex anyway because we were drunk and uh, stupid Anyway, so when I went for my tests afterwards, um, my doctor doesn't really comfort me because I go for tests quite often because I like to be very aware of what my status is. And he didn't offer me like any feel-good things. He was just like, well, if you're here, you're wanting an answer and you want the answer to, to be like you're healthy, but you're here because you put yourself at risk. And so that answer is now going to be a total 50-50. And that really stuck in my head, you know, that like 50-50 odds, because that's just pretty much life. You know, we do the best we can. We, you know, we make the bad or the good life choices. Uh, we do. And sometimes we, you know, get away with the bad life choices. And sometimes we don't. And sometimes we make good life choices. And then the condom breaks. You know, and sometimes our choice doesn't even come into it. Like, you know, when the people you trust are screwing around behind your back or you're raped or assaulted um, or you have no say over what happens to your body or how you protect it. But the thing is, if you're sexually active through your own choice or not, you're at risk of STDs, including HIV. And, and HIV isn't just a sexually transmitted disease. Transmission can happen in other ways as well. You know, what I'm trying to say is it's enormously important to understand that no one is immune to this. Just like no one driving in a car or ro using a road is immune to having an accident or getting hurt. Sure, you can take precautions that absolutely minimize your risk. You can drive safely, you can wear your seatbelt, you can follow the rules of the road, but anything could happen. You know, the brakes fail or another driver rams into you. As drivers and passengers and pedestrians, we've come to accept that there are risks involved in using that road. And even so, we drive drunk sometimes and we don't use seatbelts and we speed. You know, that's just kind of life. That's just living. We're stupid sometimes and there are risks to living. So when I think about sex, I don't understand why sex and how we practice sex and the risks attached to sex are so badly stigmatized. Sex is just one other human activity that has its ups and downs. And you should be educated about the downs as much as you're ed educated about the ups. Just like driving a car or, or eating. You know, if you're going to eat, you're not going to eat yourself into diabetes. And if you do get diabetes, you go to the doctor, you know, because you ate stupidly, type 2 diabetes, you ate stupidly, you go to the doctor, you get screened, he gives you medication, and then you continue with your life. You see what I'm saying? There's... There's very little difference. Sex is just one other human activity and it is best done with some brains and some responsibility. But we've stigmatized sex so badly, so terribly, that it makes it difficult to talk about it. We've made it into this taboo subject. And when we can't talk about it, we don't talk about it because there's so much shame involved. There's so much judgment involved. And so... And so we find that with stigmatization, our conversations around sex don't evolve. Stigmatization makes it difficult to address sexual health issues or promote an inclusive society that protects, helps, and supports minorities. 
It shuts conversation down. It stunts awareness and it isolates. It spreads ignorance and disempowerment. And moreover, it has the, like the really shitty catch-22 of increasing risk and spreading disease. Everything it's trying to ignore. As someone who likes to start and have healthy conversations around these issues, destigmatizing sex and sexual health is key to progress, any kind of progress. Our individual progress, our social progress... Which is why I love this year's theme for World AIDS Day, which is zero stigma, zero discrimination. Now, I know I should be saying that you must go out there and be a loud leader, canvassing the support for, you know, HIV and SCD and HIV awareness campaigns and raising worldwide awareness about taboo topics and stimulating conversation around HIV-related social issues. And if you want to do that, that's great. If you want to go out there and be a leader, that's awesome because we need more intelligent voices to drown out the stupidity. But the fact is, is that real change happens individually. It happens in your own mindset and it happens in your own actions, not just towards others, but in your actions towards yourself. Real change happens when you speak up for your own health and your own sexual self-empowerment. It happens when you choose to be prepared when you choose safe sex or no sex if you're not prepared. Real change happens when you get tested regularly. Like if you've had unprotected sex, that you go get tested. And if you're positive, that you get the treatment you need as soon as possible. Early treatment makes a world of difference to you. Real change happens when you choose to support others' right to their own sexual lives and their sexual self-expression. It happens when you challenge old mindsets expressed in your family and with your friends. Real change happens when you educate yourself about STDs and, and about the transmission of STDs and HIV and you choose not to discriminate against those who are positive because you know better. Real change happens when we make use of the support and the medication available. When we understand that access, access to support, access to education, access to medication, access to more treatment, access is what will change your life and the lives of those around you. Zero stigma, zero discrimination might be this month's or this year's you know, World AIDS Day month uh, theme, but it is a lifetime's mindset. Change yours and you can make a real difference.